Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to look at the preparation of amines. We're going to talk about how amines can be prepared in nucleophilic substitution reactions between a halogen alkane and ammonia, and how they can be prepared in reduction reactions of nitro groups and reduction of nitriles. Amines and reactions of amines have been covered in separate videos. Check the links in the description below. Before we talk in detail about the preparation of amines, there are a few essential ideas you need to be comfortable with. Amines are a group of organic compounds that derive or come from ammonia, NH3. Amines can be aliphatic or aromatic. In aliphatic amines, one or more of the hydrogen atoms in ammonia has been replaced with an alkyl group. An alkyl group being a straight or branched carbon chain, such as methyl or ethyl. In aromatic amines, one of the hydrogen atoms in ammonia has been replaced with an aryl group. An aryl group is an aromatic ring group, such as phenyl, effectively a benzene ring with something else attached. Amines can be primary, secondary or tertiary, depending on the number of carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen. Primary amines have one carbon group bonded to the nitrogen, secondary amines have two carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen, and tertiary amines have three carbon groups bonded to the nitrogen. Halogen alkanes, also called haloalkanes, are a group of compounds that contain an alkyl group, carbon and hydrogen chain, bonded to a halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. In simple terms, they're a bit like an alkane where a halogen has taken the place of a hydrogen. A nucleophile is an electron pair donor that is attracted to a positively charged or electron deficient atom. Nucleophiles can be negatively charged and always have a lone pair of electrons. Recap done, let's go. Amines are derivatives of ammonia, NH3. This means they can be considered as coming from ammonia. And the most straightforward way to form an amine is by reacting a halogen or alkane with ammonia. Although amines don't actually have to be directly made using ammonia, as we'll see in this video. Halogen or alkanes have a carbon atom with a partial positive charge. As a result of the halogen having a higher electronegativity than the carbon it's bonded to, making the carbon halogen bond in the molecule polar. The nitrogen atom in an ammonia molecule has a lone pair of electrons and a partial negative charge, due to nitrogen having a higher electronegativity than hydrogen. This enables a molecule of ammonia to act as a nucleophile, and if mixed with a halogen or alkane, the nitrogen atom with that lone pair of electrons will attack the partially positive carbon atom in the halogen or alkane. As a result, a nucleophilic substitution reaction will take place, and the ammonia will end up being substituted for the halogen, which gets removed as a halide ion. During the reaction, an intermediate is formed, with the nitrogen atom ending up with a positive charge, as it has one too many bonds. Another ammonia molecule will act as a base and remove a H plus ion from the nitrogen becoming a positively charged ammonium ion itself. This leaves the nitrogen group as NH2, with the nitrogen having the correct number of bonds, 3. And it produces a primary amine product. An ammonium salt is also formed between the ammonium ion and halide ion released earlier in the reaction. This reaction and mechanism has been outlined in much more detail in a separate video. Check the links in the description below. It is really important no water is present in the reaction mixture, as otherwise an alcohol would be formed. As a result, the reaction is carried out in ethanol, ethanolic conditions. If there is limited amounts of ammonia present, then secondary and tertiary amines can be formed. In the reaction mixture, there will be molecules of unreacted halogen or alkane and primary amines that have just been formed. 
As primary amines are able to act as nucleophiles, just like ammonia, further nucleophilic substitution reactions will occur between these unreacted halogenoalkane molecules and the primary amine that's present. For example, in the reaction between chloroethane and ammonia, ethyl amine gets formed, a primary amine. Ethyl amine molecules are then able to react with leftover chloroethane molecules. The nitrogen in the amine group of the ethyl amine can act as a nucleophile in just the same way as the nitrogen in ammonia can, attacking the partially positive carbon in the chloroethane. As a result, the nitrogen will end up being bonded to two ethyl groups, forming the secondary amine diethyl amine. It doesn't have to stop here, however. If there are still leftover chloroethane molecules, the nitrogen in diethylamine can again use its lone pair of electrons to attack the partially positive carbon in another chloroethane molecule. As a result, it will end up with three ethyl groups bonded to it, making triethylamine a tertiary amine. The triethyl amine can actually then further react with another chloroethane molecule and form a tetraethyl ammonium ion with a positive charge. This would form a salt with the negatively charged chloride ions that have all been removed from chloroethane molecules earlier in the reaction. As mentioned at the start of this video, just because amines are ammonia derivatives doesn't actually mean they have to be made using ammonia. Another method for preparing primary amines is the reduction of nitriles. A nitrile group consists of a carbon atom that is triple bonded to a nitrogen atom. For example, ethan nitrile can be reduced to the primary amine ethyl amine. Now, reduction in organic chemistry at this level can be considered as a carbon atom losing a bond to an element with a higher electronegativity than itself, like oxygen or nitrogen, and the gaining of a bond to hydrogen. When a nitrile is reduced, such as with ethan nitrile, a carbon atom loses two bonds to nitrogen, as the carbon-nitrogen bond in the CN group goes from being a triple bond to a single bond. At the same time, the carbon atom gains two bonds to hydrogen, meaning it is reduced. The nitrogen, able to form three bonds, now only has one bond to the carbon, and as a result, forms two bonds to hydrogen atoms itself, becoming an NH2 group, forming a primary amine in this case, ethylamine. To get this reduction reaction to happen, a reducing agent is needed, often lithium aluminium tetrahydride, LiAlH4, is used. This provides a negatively charged hydrogen ion called a hydride ion that kickstarts the reaction. And the only problem is that lithium aluminium tetrahydride reacts violently with water, meaning the reaction must be carried out in dry ether. Hydrogen gas and a nickel catalyst can also be used for the reduction of a nitrile to a primary amine, and such reactions are examples of catalytic hydrogenation. Nitriles aren't the only group that can be reduced to form amines. Nitro groups from aromatic compounds can also be reduced to form aromatic amines. This is a useful process as aromatic amines are often required in the manufacturing of dyes. For example, nitrobenzene is made up of a benzene ring with a nitro NO2 group bonded to one of the carbons in the ring. When reacted with concentrated hydrochloric acid and tin, a reduction reaction occurs and the nitro group, NO2, gets converted into an NH2 group, forming the aromatic amine, phenylamine. The reaction is a reduction as the nitrogen is reduced. It loses covalent bonds to oxygen, which is more electronegative than itself, and gains bonds to hydrogen, which is less electronegative. Now, the amine formed would act as a base here and accept H plus ions from the concentrated hydrochloric acid present, forming a positively charged phenyl ammonium ion. 
To get the phenyl amine, sodium hydroxide would have to be added, and the hydroxide ions would take a H plus ion from the phenyl ammonium ion and form water, leaving phenyl amine with an NH2 group behind. So, to summarize, primary amines can be formed by reacting a halogen alkane with ammonia. In ammonia, the nitrogen atom has a lone pair of electrons that enables it to act as a nucleophile. Nucleophilic substitution occurs and a primary amine forms, as well as an ammonium halide salt. No water can be present in the reaction mixture, otherwise an alcohol would be formed, meaning the reaction is carried out in ethanol, ethanolic conditions. Secondary and tertiary amines can be formed by the further substitution of primary amines with halogenoalkane molecules. Just like in ammonia, the nitrogen atom in the primary amine has a lone pair of electrons and can act as a nucleophile, meaning the primary amine gets substituted for the halogen in the halogenoalkane, forming a secondary amine. The secondary amine can then react in the same way again with another halogenoalkane molecule, forming a tertiary amine. Tertiary amines can then react with another halogenoalkane molecule, ending up forming tetraalkyl ammonium ions. Primary amines can also be formed by the reduction of nitriles. Lithium aluminium tetrahydride, LIALH4 is used as a reducing agent and provides hydride ions, H minus ions. The reaction must be carried out in dry ether as LIALH4 reacts violently with water. Nitriles can also be reduced to primary amines by the use of hydrogen and a nickel catalyst in catalytic hydrogenation reactions. Aromatic amines can be formed by the reduction of a nitro group bonded to an aromatic ring, for example nitrobenzene. Concentrated hydrochloric acid is used with tin. The amine group formed acts as a base and accepts a H plus ion from leftover acid, forming an aryl ammonium ion. To get the aromatic amine, sodium hydroxide is added. I hope you found this video useful, please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.